Hello everyone and welcome back to a new update to the NavMesh Vehicle AI. So a user um, uh, asked him to uh, basically warn me that the path offsetting system that I added was creating a little bit of a problem. So when you actually set up two targets, uh, so if I actually search for my targets here, um, so if you have a target, so the vehicle wants to go here and then come back here, there was a little bug where um, using the path offsetting, the vehicle will go reach this point and then come back, but then it would reach, reach like this position here and it would kind of bug out. Now I tried to investigate why the path offsetting tracing that I created wasn't working here, and I couldn't really find a exact solution um, or a cause even for why that was happening. So I decided to just not use the path offsetting and try to create a better system that um, is a little bit more intuitive and actually found a very good way to do that. So right now you can see that my nav mesh, uh, you can press P to toggle your nav mesh. You can see that my nav mesh is very, very far away from the wall. So I found a way that if the vehicles go outside the nav mesh bounds, they're going to go back and try to find the closest point to the nav mesh. So if they go close to the wall because they were going too fast or something, they can still uh, get the closest path to the nav mesh and then get out of that area and continue. This is very good for to avoid obstacles. And then if they, for some reason, because of speed or collision, they go uh, outside of the bounds, they can still find their way into the nav mesh again and continue. And that's kind of on by default. So if I show you right now, and if I go into my vehicle AI controller, I achieved that using a node that uh, for some reason I didn't know existed. Uh, this project point to navigation, um, I set up the query extent to be 10 meters. And I basically just connected to get the world location and connect that to the path start when I find the path. Uh, for the vehicle to move. That means that it's going to search 10 meters outside uh, or from the location of the vehicle and try to find a point in the nav mesh. So uh, if I go into my recast nav mesh here, you can see that I've set up my nav uh, agent radius to be seven and a half meters. So if you actually make this too big, uh, or if it's bigger than this value here, then it will not work. So you need to extend this query extent in this node here inside your vehicle AI controller. Uh, you need to increase this value if you actually use super large agent radius. But I think that for at least these vehicles, this 750 works very good. And uh, I actually added the new uh, UE5 uh, vehicle. This is the request of that customer that I told you about that found this bug. Um, he asked me to make the system work with the UE5 vehicle here. So this is the old UE4 one. This is the new one on UE5. And I just uh, put everything together. So the way that I did that, so the sports car, I just added the nav mesh vehicle AI. These are the settings that I'm using right now. Uh, I think pretty much all of them are the default. I added a new variable, a new system, which is steering multiplier. So I found out that this vehicle, uh, the new AI vehicle, does not steer uh, with the same amounts uh, that the UE4 one does. So if you actually uh, debug the code, you can see that this vehicle, when this one tries to turn at like a value of 0.8, this one only tries to turn like at a value of 0.2, which makes it almost not turn at all. So what I did is I actually created a new variable, which is a steering multiplier. And I just set it to five uh, for the new UE5 vehicle. This one, I think I left it at 1.5 um, because this one didn't really need any multiplier there, but this one needs it. So I added that in. So you can change that there. Uh, and yeah, I am uh, drawing the debugging just over here so we can see. So if I press simulate right now, you can see that the vehicle is going to I start off a little bit slow. This one is going to start off faster. This is because of the optical detection. I increase it a little bit on this one because it goes very fast. But now you can see that they're going to go through the edge of the nav mesh. This is normal behavior with the nav mesh. I can't really change that. Uh, but you can see that now these vehicles are going to start going outside, but they're going to find their way in. You can see that he's going to go outside, but right over here. But he still knows where he has to go. So he's not going to lose the nav mesh and he's not going to become bugged. And yeah, now they're going to go over to that point and turn back, uh, both of them. There you go. Uh, yeah, and you can see that everything is working fine. And now this vehicle goes a little bit slow. That's because I, uh, uh, I'm i actually making his throttle uh, go very low when he's like trying to turn. That's because I found out that this vehicle, without obstacle detection, he goes really, really fast. And then he was kind of eating the wall and flipping about. There you go, just like that. And now you can see that uh, the vehicle is going to try to find a, a way out. He's actually not being able to do it because of the obstacle detection itself. That's something else that I need to fix. 
But yeah, you can see that he's very slowly trying to find a way out, and he should eventually get out. So I just, I know that this is wrong. Uh, this vehicle actually already did two turns. Uh, but yeah, let me just give it a little bit of a help here. No, I think he's doing it. Yeah, he's doing it by himself. There you go, and now he should go. Now, another thing with the new vehicle AI that I'm going to show you. Yeah, now he's going to start to accelerate. Yeah, and he's going to continue the path. So, you can see that there's still some issues here. Uh, I'm going to fix them before I put the patch in, don't worry. But I just wanted to leave those values like that. So, you see that the vehicle, even though he's kind of stuck over here in the corner, outside of the nav mesh, he can still find a, a way in now. Uh, so it's very important uh, that you set up your agent radius to a larger value and the uh, AI will do the rest. Another thing that I want to point out in the new UE5 vehicle is that by default, if you go into its vehicle movement component, and if you go into the wheels over here, uh, and you search the wheels front, and you open them up, by default, their steering is going to be um, a little bit lower than this. I think it's 30 something or 40 something. And I actually increase it a lot. I know this is unrealistic, but for the AI, it really needs that help for steering. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to do this kind of sharp turns. And uh, it's important that you increase this value if you're using AI on the vehicles. And I just set this one at 74. Now, one thing that I didn't know that uh, it also does different on the this new vehicle is that when the wheels are turning, the throttle is actually reduced. So that is, if he starts turning a lot over here, he's actually going to reduce his velocity a lot, which is a little bit, um, well, again, unrealistic. But it's just the way that they made the new, uh, the new vehicle settings. Now you can probably go in and change the settings, but I don't want to uh, actually change the defaults too much because I want the users to be able to see how the new vehicle works with the AI. But yeah, I already showed you this. I'm not going to show you again, but you can see that everything goes well. Uh, you can see that the vehicle accelerates a lot and then kind of goes a little bit slower. And um, yeah, it's really now uh, up to you to kind of toggle their values depending on your how your level is. So let's see if he actually gets stuck again. I'm actually curious to see if he does the same thing. Uh, because if he does, then I'm going to show you uh, just some way to tweak the settings. So let's just give it uh, a second for him to turn away. So you can see that it's kind of going to accelerate a lot. It's not really reducing his speed too much. So you can actually see that uh, he's actually losing. I think I think I know what happened. I think it's because of the query extent being 10 meters, he might be actually finding a path there and it's kind of bugging him out. Um, this is a problem with this node right over here, um, because this node does not take into account what is uh, reachable. So you might try to find uh, a point from to go, for example, on this side of the wall, which is not ideal. So what you need to do is that you need to make sure that your nav mesh is actually accurate enough. Um, and for example, I'm just going to reduce mine so that it fits the level exactly the way that I want it. And I'm not going to leave it like outside the bounds. So I'm going to do it just a little bit more accurate to what I want to do so that there's no nav mesh outside of the like the playing area. And let's try again and see if it works. Uh, that's the problem with that you new know that basically fixes those issues, but it also forces you to be more careful with how you place the nav mesh. You can also use nav modifiers to help you in this kind of situations where if there's, for example, an area that you want to have nav mesh, but you don't want the vehicles to go here, you can just put like a nav modifier so that the cost of this area is higher. So the vehicle is always going to prefer uh, going this way instead of that way. Uh, by the way, you already have that. If you go into blueprints, uh, if you go into AI, you have the nav area road, uh, which you can use to kind of give a preferential path to your vehicles. Because right now they're just hugging the nav mesh, but if you use this nav modifier, you can actually ask them to go to certain areas and kind of avoid these issues. So you can see that this vehicle is doing the movement fine. This one, because it's faster, uh, is having some issues. But there you go. Now you can see that because I limited the nav mesh, now he's no longer trying to find a path there, and now he's doing everything fine. So everything is working fine. And now they're just going to keep looping because that's their setting. 
And um, yeah, I just wanted to show you all these changes um, that I have. I mean, it's not a lot of changes. It's just like I just changed how it works in the four and I disabled the offset padding because it was pretty issues. I also noticed that um, the points, because they are being rate reset each tick, uh, like that the card is, uh, kind of updates its padding, it was giving them slightly different points, which was making the, the vehicles kind of um, steering in different directions, like if like they were losing control. Uh, using this node, the project uh, to navigation is actually much more stable. You can see the points don't move. They're always in the same place, which just helps the vehicle be more stable in their padding, which is pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, so if you have any problems, please join the Discord server or leave a comment and I'll try to help you. And yeah, hopefully this update is to your liking. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.